Now, President Trump is pretty famous for throwing temper tantrums if he doesn't get his way. Which is exactly what happened uh, back in May when Attorney General Jeff Sessions recused himself over the Russia probe. Now, he couldn't stand it. And he was absolutely pissed. Uh, now, I want to show you uh, how angry he got at Jeff Sessions over his recusal. Uh, I go to the New York Times. It, they write, shortly after learning in May that special counsel had been appointed to investigate links between his campaign associates and Russia, President Trump berated Attorney General Jeff Sessions in an Oval Office meeting, according to current and former administration officials. Now, why would he go after Jeff Sessions? Yeah, I know. Jeff Sessions recused himself because he himself did not disclose meetings that he had with Russians. He actually had to. I mean, this was according to the law. He had to recuse himself. Because he had had contact with the Russian ambassador without actually disclosing it. That would be a conflict of interest. So yes, he was forced to recuse himself. Now Trump, of course, very unhappy about that. Uh, and he actually considered it a betrayal. Um, the president, according to the New York Times, had attributed the appointment of the special counsel, Robert Mueller, to Sessions' decision to recuse himself. A move Mr. Trump believes was the moment his administration effectively lost control over the inquiry. Accusing Mr. Sessions of disloyalty, Mr. Trump unleashed a string of insults on his attorney general. Uh, now, this is according to uh, interviews with seven different people. Okay, this is not fake news. Okay, so they talk to the people inside the White House. They're like, don't say anything. Don't say who I am. But here's what I witnessed during this uh, presidential dressing down. Uh, so now, according to them, they said the president's outburst came in the middle of an Oval Office meeting that Mr. Trump had on May 17th with top advisors. Now, they were discussing candidates that would take over the FBI after the president had fired James Comey. Now, in addition to Mr. Sessions, Vice President Mike Pence, Donald McGahn II, uh, II the White House counsel and several other aides had attended the meeting. Now, in the meeting, in the middle of the meeting, I should say, McGahn received a phone call from Rod Rosenstein. Now, Rosenstein was the attorney general uh, who had been overseeing the investigation. He was the one that actually appointed special counsel Robert Mueller. Now, in the telephone call to Mr. McGahn, Rosenstein said he had decided to appoint Mr. Mueller as special counsel. When the phone call ended, McGahn relayed the news to the president and his aides, and almost immediately, Trump began lobbing a volley of insults towards Mr. Sessions, saying that the, it was basically his fault that they were in the current situation. Trump also told Sessions that choosing him to be his attorney general was one of the worst decisions that he ever made, called him an idiot, and said, you should resign. <laughs> now, look, I have no love for Jeff Sessions. So I'm not, I'm not going to feel sorry for him because look, if you throw in with Donald Trump, that's what you're going to get. He's a volatile man child, but I guess we all kind of know that by now. And certainly people in the white house should have known that by now, but it is interesting to see him get thrown under the bus. Uh, now what was Sessions reaction? Well, you're going to love this. An emotional Mr. Sessions told the president he would resign and left the Oval Office. That evening, as the Justice Department publicly announced the appointment of Mr. Mueller, the Attorney General wrote a brief resignation letter to the President that was later sent to the White House. A person familiar with the events raised the possibility that Mr. Sessions had become emotional because the impact of his recusal was becoming clear. Sessions also would later tell associates that the demeaning way the President addressed him was the most humiliating experience in decades of public life. You know, that actually sounds a lot like the way that John Kelly had described his most recent dressing down at the hands of the president. Now, unlike Kelly, of course, Sessions kind of just slinked away and went to go hide in his treehouse to draft his resignation letter. Kelly, of course, is like, I will never let Trump speak to me like that again. And then he literally started cleaning house inside the White House getting rid of uh, Anthony Scaramucci, getting rid of Steve Bannon, uh, Sebastian Gorka. So he's like, no, I'm not going to take this. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start controlling the White House. 
We'll see how long that lasts. But Sessions, of course, was like, ooh, I got to go write my resignation letter. <laughs> Speaking of the letter, in the hours after the Oval Office meeting, Mr. Trump's uh, uh, advisors, top advisors, actually intervened to stop him from uh, releasing that letter and to stop him from resigning. Now, uh, Mr. Pence, Stephen Bannon, uh, and Reince Priebus all advised that accepting Mr. Sessions' resignation would only sow more chaos inside the administration and rally Republicans in Congress against the president. Now, the president, of course, said, okay, never mind. I'm not going to take your resignation letter. He actually returned it to Mr. Sessions with a handwritten response. Uh, so he's like, okay, never mind. My aides talked me out of it. <laughs> You're lucky. You're lucky Stephen Bannon uh, it likes you so much. Yeah, but that didn't stop Donald Trump from actually attacking Sessions openly to try to get him to quit. Now, interestingly enough here, right, I noticed who talked them out or talked the president out of firing Jeff Sessions. That would be Stephen Bannon and Reince Priebus and Mike Pence. The only one that's left is Mike Pence. <laughs> and with that loss of support, watch out. The next thing uh, Sessions does that wrongs the president, oh, it's not going to get good. It's not going to be good at all. Now, in fact, according to the Times, the aggressiveness with which Mr. Trump had fought Sessions' removal was a blow to him. Hmm. Or, I, I'm sorry, had sought Sessions' removal. Now, some of the president's aides... Not sure if Mr. Trump really wanted the attorney general gone or was working through his anger, as I said, were able to delay the firing until the president's anger passed. However, Trump continued his public attacks in the days that followed, including taking to Twitter to call him weak, a word that is among the harshest criticisms in Mr. Trump's arsenal. And if you think this has gotten better over time, it has not. Administration officials and some of Mr. Trump's outside advisors have puzzled at Mr. Sessions' decision to stay on. But, Mr., uh, but people close to Mr. Sessions said that he did not leave because he had a chance to have an impact on what he sees as a defining issue of his career, curtailing both legal and illegal immigration. So Sessions says, look, man, I did not like the way that Trump talked to me. It was humiliating. Uh, and I quit. I want to quit, but maybe if I stay, I'm going to be able to be racist and keep all the immigrants out, <laughs> the dirty immigrants, okay? Well, that's interesting. Because um, look, recently, uh, Jeff Sessions was able to uh, make the announcement that Trump was undoing DACA, right? Uh, and actually, um, he told people that he had successfully pushed the president towards ending that policy. However, recently, Mr. Trump undercut Sessions in a tweet saying that he would reconsider whether or not to end that program, <laughs> leading the attorney general to tell allies that he was frustrated that the president had muddled months of work leading to the announcement of that new policy. And on Wednesday evening, Democrats have announced that they had reached a little bit of a tentative deal with the president to extend protections for young undocumented immigrants under the DACA program. And on Thursday morning, take, uh, taking a vastly different position from the one Mr. Sessions had announced, the president tweeted about the need for protections for people brought here through no fault of their own. So here comes Trump making a little bit of a deal with the Democrats to provide protections for dreamers, directly spitting in Sessions' eye. <laughs> and I absolutely love it. Not just because extending protections is part of the right thing to do. Um, but also because it's got so many people who are like Jeff Sessions, who are super anti-immigrant crying, even Ann Coulter is pissed. <laughs> now, this of course shows that I think that Trump is fed up with losing on issues because of very unpopular Republican policies and that he's willing to take a win wherever he can get one, even if it means on shitting on Republicans and also means that. Of course, the more establishment voices that are in favor of DACA um, are actually starting to win out 
now that he's got people like Steve Bannon out, Stephen Miller is, of course, still there, but his voice is vastly diminished. Um, Sebastian Gorka, like I said, gone. <laughs> so who's left? Wall Street guys. Wall Street guys and establishment figures and also members of Trump's family who have no ideology. So that's why they're more than willing to, of course, uh, shit on the Republicans and go against Republican ideology because they have no ideology of their own. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.